So Splatoon 3 comes out in two months, and I'm beyond excited. Not only am I excited to play, but I'm also hyped to be able to make more content for you guys. And I hope that all of you watching are excited for these things as well. Remember, if you like what you see here at this channel and want to see even more Splatoon related content, such as gameplay, theory, and guides, please consider liking and subscribing. It helps me out a lot more than you might think. Anyway, as I was saying, the launch of Splatoon 3 is right around the corner. And while I am super excited, it's hard for me to ignore the fact that we don't know much about this game. Like, barely anything. Sure, we've had a few trailers over the past two years, and we've been getting drip-fed small bits of info via the official Splatoon Twitter accounts, but as a whole, for how close we are to this game's release, I'd say that we don't know enough. Now, am I asking for Nintendo to tell us everything about Splatoon 3 from the inside out? Of course not. I wouldn't want them to pull a Pokemon Sun and Moon with this game. But we do have to consider the casual Splatoon player and the common criticism that Splatoon 3 gets for looking too similar to Splatoon 2. For myself, and probably most people watching this video, Splatoon 3 does look like a significantly new experience. But to someone who isn't crazy about the game like we are, that might not be the case. And I think a large reason as to why that may be true is due to the lack of information that Nintendo has revealed about this game. And yeah, I know, a Splatoon related Direct is imminent. Whenever that comes out, I'm sure we'll know a lot more about the game. But my point is that they shouldn't be saving all the big information for a Direct that's going to air one month before the game's release. In my opinion, I don't think that's a great marketing strategy. So in this video, I just wanted to go over 5 things that, in my opinion, we should know by now. All of these are pretty basic stuff, and I'm so surprised we know nothing about these yet. Let's start off with perhaps the most obvious one. Where are the ranked modes? And are there going to be any new ranked modes? Now I know what you're going to say. Chase, it's so obvious that ranked is coming back. Nintendo doesn't even need to talk about that because they'd rather talk about the brand new stuff right now. And my response to that is, have you seen the information that we've been getting? When all we're hearing from Nintendo is updates on the new stuff that the in-game clothing brands are designing, it does make you wonder a little bit. But realistically, there's not a doubt in my mind that Ranked won't be returning. However, what I am more skeptical of is the addition of a new Ranked mode. Getting one or two new Ranked modes was one of my biggest hopes for this game, and just thinking about playing a mode that wasn't in Splatoon 2 makes me so hyped. But given that we're so close to launch and we still haven't heard anything about this, I'm starting to think that we won't be getting one. At least, not at launch. But let's hope I'm wrong about that. This next one also boggles my mind a bit. Remember the new squid roll and squid surge techniques? Well, if you don't, I wouldn't blame you, because we know next to nothing about these besides what we got in the initial reveal trailer. Now, we did see the squid roll used a couple times in the release date revealed trailer, but it only showed it a couple times, and we still don't really know anything about it. Like, how does it work? How do you perform it? How many times can you use it? And the Squid Surge has been absent ever since that very first reveal trailer. We know even less about that one. Next up is something that a lot more casual fans have been wondering about. And that, of course, is none other than... Idols. Who are the idols in this game? What do they look like? What's their gender? Does this game even have idols? Now, I'm not gonna lie. I don't really care about this one, but there seems to be a hell of a lot of people that do, so I think it's appropriate for this list. But when I think about it, the idols are such a big aspect of Splatoon, at least they were in the previous two games, how do you not promote the new ones? Now, it could be possible that Nintendo wants to focus on the idols less in this game. Again, maybe this game just doesn't have any. Maybe to fit the whole chaos theme, there are no current idols or something? Who knows. But my point is that it's very surprising that we know nothing about this yet. Number 4. Information about stages. So as most of you know, on the Splatoon Twitter account, we've gotten some updates regarding two new maps for Splatoon 3. Albeit very tiny updates, just showing us drone shots of these new stages without really going into detail. We haven't even seen any gameplay on them yet. But as of now, we know of 5 stages in Splatoon 3, 4 of which are brand new. The only returning stage that we know of at the moment is Museum Dolphonsino, which in my opinion is a great pick for a returning stage. But here's the deal, Splatoon 2 had 23 maps when the game stopped getting updates. 
Splatoon 3 comes out in two months, and we know five of them. Now, yeah, I know. Splatoon is a series that gets updated, so a lot of the maps that will be in the game probably aren't even ready yet, and that's why we don't know much. However, we have to consider the fact that both Splatoon 1 and 2 had pretty rushed development periods, and I think that was a major reason why the first two games had such minimal content at launch. Splatoon 3 has had a much longer development time, and Nintendo has already confirmed that every main weapon will be in the game at launch, which is a good sign. So, knowing this information, I think it's fair to assume that we will also have a bit more maps at launch, at least more than the previous two games. I'm predicting anywhere between 12 to 15. It's just strange that it's taken so long for us to get anything on new maps, as it was only recently that Nintendo revealed Undertow Spillway and Mint's Meat Metalworks. When the inevitable direct comes, I'm sure we'll find out a lot more about the stages. Finally, let's talk about Salmon Run. Now, some of my hardcore fans will know that I don't like Salmon Run. In fact, I couldn't care less about it. But even though I don't personally care for it, I can't deny that Salmon Run is a lot of people's favorite mode in Splatoon 2, and that's where they've racked up most of their hours. Some people literally only play Salmon Run. So it's no secret that a lot of people love this mode. And that's why I'm shocked that we still know so little about it. And yeah, I know, right now you're thinking, Chase, what? We literally got a whole trailer dedicated to Salmon Run. What are you talking about? Now, yes, this is true. But when you look closely at the trailer, it really didn't tell us that much. Sure, there are new boss salmonids and a new egg throwing technique, which is great. But what exactly is the hook here? What's going to be the big game changer that makes people want to play Salmon Run in Splatoon 3 after already trying it in Splatoon 2? Now, the honest truth here might be that there isn't one. Maybe new bosses and egg throwing is all that's new. But at the end of the trailer, Nintendo did tease this gigantic behemoth looking salmonid thing, so I'm kind of assuming that this is the quote unquote twist. Like, I feel like the gameplay is going to change drastically when your team has to fight this thing. But I don't really know, I'm kind of just assuming. And I think that's what the problem is here. As fans, we're having to make too many assumptions about Splatoon 3. Like, yeah, sure, we can just assume that there will be a new ranked mode, or we can just assume that Salmon Run will have a big twist that Nintendo is hiding. But given that this game is two months away, I just feel like, as fans, we shouldn't have to be guessing all this stuff. Now yeah, I'm still gonna buy Splatoon 3 no matter what. Because the truth is, I'm a super fan. So even if this game is extremely disappointing, I'm still probably gonna play the heck out of it. But I don't worry about myself when it comes to this game. I worry about the casual audience. Is Splatoon 3 doing enough to keep them interested? A Splatoon Direct is most likely coming. But will that be too late? I guess only time will tell. Last thing guys, let me know in the comments what other things you think we as fans should know about Splatoon 3 by now. And also let me know how you feel about how Nintendo is handling Splatoon 3's marketing. With that, thanks so much for watching guys, I hope you all have a great day, and I'll see you all next time. Take care.